on today's show, we go back into hyperbolic geometry. So we toss Euclid's parallel postulate and we play with area in the hyperbolic plane. Um, I want to present a lemma and a theorem in this screencast. It's a pretty big theorem. It's got a guy's name attached to it, and that always means something. So in the lemma, we're going to suppose that the defect of triangle ABC is equal to the defect of triangle DEF and we're going to suppose that AB is congruent to DE. Then we will prove that triangle ABC is scissors congruent to triangle DEF. This begins for us to establish a connection between defects and areas. So here's the rough idea. Here's triangle ABC, here's triangle DEF, AB and DE are congruent. Here's the thing. Their associated Sakari quads are congruent. What? Well, construct the Sakari quad. Extend that, drop the perpendiculars, extend that, drop the perpendiculars. These are two Sakari quads with congruent summits. And we know from a theorem, uh, you can prove it in your book, it's theorem 6.1.12. Gosh, I hope this, this video ages well. There's a theorem way back in the beginning of chapter 6 that says if two Sakari quads have congruent summits, then they are congruent if the defects are equal. So you have two Sakari quads with equal defect and congruent summits. So here's that connection again between, uh, between distance and defect. You have two Sakari quads with equal defect and congruent summits. Their associated Sakari quads are congruent. And if their associated Sakari quads are congruent, then the triangles themselves must be scissors congruent because you can make this into that and you can make that into this, and so you're done. Now, why do we need the lemma? We need the lemma so we can prove Bolyai's theorem. And Bolyai's theorem says if the defect of triangle ABC equals the defect of triangle DEF, then triangle ABC is scissors congruent to triangle DEF. Now that's a big jump because there's no, see in the lemma, in the lemma this has to happen and Bolyai says we're going to use the lemma to show that that doesn't have to happen. So here's the rough idea behind the proof. So you've got triangle ABC, you've got triangle DEF, maybe it looks like this. Um, the defects are equal. Um, if one of the segments is congruent, if one of the corresponding pairs of segments is congruent, then we're done by the lemma. So we're going to assume without loss of generality that DF is longer than AC. And that means when we go to take the midpoints here as if we were going to construct the associated Sakari quad, when that happens, because DF is bigger than AC, this AM is less than 
half of df. Right. So then we choose g on mn such that ag is half of df. That's where the genius is. There's some point g, right? There's some point g such that ag is half of df. And then we find a point h such that ag and gh are congruent. So now ah is congruent to df. Well, triangle ABC and triangle ABH have the same associated Sakari quad. To get the Sakari quad for ABC or to get the Sakari quad for ABH, you drop perpendiculars to the same line from A and B. And so triangle ABC is scissors congruent to triangle ABH. But by the lemma, triangle ABH is scissors congruent to triangle DEF. And so by transitivity, triangle ABC is scissors congruent to triangle DEF. So Bolei's theorem cinches for us the connection between defect and area. In hyperbolic geometry, two figures with the same defect are scissors congruent. So a couple of big results to talk about with respect to that, and those are coming right up.